So, you installed Legends of Frontera and are trying to get better at the game, whether to climb in ranked or to beat that annoying friend who always brags about being a top tier player but just has decent luck, this video will help you understand how champions work and why they are so important when deck building and in a match. What are champions? In Legends of Frontera, champions are a special type of unit with abilities and effects that no other card has. Champions use a specific tool from the game and they excel at it. They can be so powerful that you can only have 6 in one deck. And you cannot play a copy of the same champion while it is in play. These unique cards also level up throughout the game, getting better stats and new abilities. And they can turn the game around by themselves, but more on that later. So, who are these champions? They are the stars of League of Legends the playable characters introduced in the MOBA. These characters are the main stars from Riot Games and are slowly getting to star in their own games, TV shows and more. And the Valorant agents are there too, I guess. When choosing a champion to add to your deck, you must consider their stats, abilities and other characteristics. Let's go over them. Like with any Legends of Frontera unit, champions have a cost, power and health values regions, keywords, and abilities. Below their abilities, champion cards show the requirements that are need to be met before leveling up. These requirements range from playing certain cards, dealing an amount of damage, to seeing other units die. Once a champion levels up, their power and health grows, they can earn new keywords or gain new abilities. This level up is not limited to the champion in play, all of its copies in your deck will also be leveled up. So, if your opponent kills your champion, you can play it once more in their leveled up state. Some champions can also ascend from level 2 to level 3. This is a feature limited to the ascended champions, Asir, Nasus, Renekton and Shera. This happens when the Sun Disk is restored, ensuring the ascended champions achieve their maximum potential. Champions in Legends of Frontera have their own spell to which they are associated. These spells also exist as separate cards. At the beginning of the video, we mentioned that you cannot play two copies of the same champion. This is because the other copies of the champion transform into their spell when drawn from the deck, impeding you from playing them. This doesn't mean that you cannot get additional copies of the same champion on the board. There are multiple ways to get past this rule, and there are a lot of decks that rely on it to win. Now that we know how champions work, we need to answer the following question. Do I need to include a champion in every deck? The answer is no. You don't have to include a champion in all your decks. In fact, there are a lot of fun to play decks that don't use champions. It is true that champions are stronger units, but with the vast number of cards in the game, multiple strategies don't require champions. But if you want to include a champion in your deck, you can choose to make them the central piece of it or just a side unit that is there to help other cards achieve their potential. At the end of the day, you're in control of your decks, and you can choose if you need a champion or not. However, if you choose to include multiple champions in your deck, you must consider their synergies. So, what are card synergies? Well, a card synergizes with another one if they work well together. For example, Chomp Womp synergizes with Puff Cap Peddler because the Womp creates spells that plant mushrooms in the opponent's deck. And the Peddler will plant more mushrooms when you cast a spell. These cards synergize with each other. And when played together, you can increase the number of mushrooms planted from 10 to 16. But how can we apply this to champions? In the same way, let's use the Juanian Gangplank as an example. These champions are from different regions and have different abilities when played but they share the same level up condition. You've damaged the enemy nexus in 5 different rounds. This creates a synergy between them because you can level them up simultaneously and put extra pressure on your opponent. I am reborn of salt and pride. Champions might have synergy with each other, 
but you need to make sure that their followers also work well together. You need to be aware of the promise of synergy and its viability. Sometimes you will find two champions that appear to work well together. For example, Leona and Yasuo. Leona's son's enemies when Daybreak is activated, and Yasuo deals damage to recalled and stunned units. In theory, these two cards should work well together. But when looking at their followers and spells, Leona didn't have a lot of stun support among her ranks, relying only on her ability to do so. With time, New cards were added that introduced more stun support for Leona and helping her synergy with Yasuo, but both champions have better synergies with other cards at the end of the day. Let's say you've built a deck with champions. The cards synergize with each other. You go into a match, you draw a champion and you wonder, when is the best time to play them? Should you play them right away? Do you wait until they can level up to play them? There is no clear answer here. Sometimes, you might play a champion early, only for them to get demolished by a spell or another unit in the same turn. Other times, you might play them later and not be able to achieve their level up requirements in time. It depends on the strategy you're going for, the deck your opponent has, and what champions you are playing. If there were a clear-cut answer, everyone would play the same way. The beauty of Legends of Frontera is that the same cards in different decks can be played entirely differently. You can even play the same deck against other opponents in many ways. The limit is your skill and the cards you choose. Before we go, I wanted to point out some great champions that can help players get used to the game's mechanics. These champions are all from the Foundation set, which started it all, because they are straightforward. Each of these champions will help new players understand the game's different mechanics. Elise is the champion for beginners by excellence. She's featured in one of the decks you are given when you start your journey, and that deck continues to be valuable to this day. Elise teaches new players about card types using the spiders group. You need multiple spiders to level her up, and by doing so, you impact the spiders in play. Brom is the best champion to learn how to trade. He forces you to deal damage to him by blocking the opponent or challenging their units. Upon level up, Brom can flood the board with Poros, helping you replenish your ranks while Brom takes care of the threats your units don't want to face. Darius is a straightforward champion. He deals damage and levels up when the enemy nexus is under 10 health, making him deal even more damage. Darius teaches new players how to be aggressive, and shows the value of dealing damage to your opponent to make the late game more manageable for you. Jinx is an interesting case. Her mechanic consists of emptying your hand as quickly as possible to level her up. She's meant to teach new players that you can win in unconventional ways. Using all your cards will give you this super mega death rocket that will damage the enemy units and the nexus. It invites players to go all in. Garen is another simple champion. He shows players the importance of attacking and getting units on the board. He represents the Demacia archetype. Call reinforces and go all in. Upon leveling up, Garen will let players attack on the turns that they are supposed to defend, so players are forced to manage their units carefully. Yasuo teaches new players the importance of synergy and spells. Most stuns and recalls come from spells. With these, beginners can learn how to remove threats from the board while also dealing damage using Yasuo. Other champions come to mind when thinking about new players. We could sit here and explain most of them, but this is a guide for beginners. We've already covered the basics, now it's your turn to go and experiment in-game. If you want to learn more about the game, check out our Guides for Beginners playlist. We've made videos on how to get more cards without spending money, the types of decks in Legends of Frontera, and more. If you found this video helpful, leave a like and a comment, they're really appreciated. Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for everything Runeterra.